All right, you guys, so um, real quick. Um, basically, the 10-year uh, treasury is holding right here at this resistance. And like I had said before, you can look for the pullback on that, and that would be the opportunity to close shorts and or go long. But it could just hang out here in this range for a little bit. If it breaks higher, uh, that would be too short, right? So if suddenly you see a breakout on the TNX, if it starts to move in this direction uh, over, I'd say, Friday and Monday, Tuesday next week, that is a short opportunity no matter, like I said, no matter where Bitcoin's at, if you start to see that movement, that's going to bring Bitcoin probably at very least down to that 17,000. On the SPY, what you have is this, uh, since uh, June, we've been in this upward wedge. We had the bull trap up here, and then that wedge broke down, but you're at the bottom of that trend line right here. And so what you're looking for you could shave off a little bit, 393.59. Uh, uh, you'd be looking for a bounce here, okay? And so right now, <clears throat> um, that's kind of anyone's guess. If you break this level in a um, with confirmation, this 393.59, um, then you're going to see further downside. But you would probably see the... Uh, the TNX would probably move just ahead of that. So we'll give you a little bit of a heads up if the SPY is going to break down, unless it's news related, uh, meaning that there would be something that happened like in the Ukraine or some kind of event that was a catalyst versus economic data. Um, and so the one, so this is, the TNX is indicating the macro scale on a larger time frame. Just think about it like that. The one thing that tells me that I don't think that this is going to break down below this uh, trend line this week is the VIX. So if you go over to the VIX, like I said, that's kind of your uh, immediate radar. So what's happening? Well, you kind of saw this uh, wedge break higher, but now you're kind of getting a pullback. So if the VIX pulls back Friday, and it can move quickly or it could just hang out in this range, then that would be bullish ultimately, not right away, right? Don't get the wrong idea. It would be an indicator that would tell us that the um, that Bitcoin will probably hold these levels and it might just kind of get trapped here and get one of those uh, kind of, um, that's if it's at all bullish. You might get a liquidation candle up to this uh 22,773 range. Um, the dollar is setting up here. And what's interesting about that is you have several days now where the dollar is trading um, and setting up basically holding support at that level. So that's concerning for any kind of bearish or um, bullish kind of scenario. So, um, you know, that's what's up with that. Uh, oil is something to keep an eye on um, as well and what you want to watch for with oil especially in the upcoming weeks is if you get this pullback and then you get a sudden rip you could set an alert um, but if oil breaks back above uh, I'd say if it just breaks above this 101 that would be something that you would set an alert on because that is also another indicator. It could be happening in the macro scale. Things could be happening on the uh, with the bonds, but another big mover that affects the whole macro scale, the price of oil, the petrodollar, it's a big deal. So if suddenly you were to see um, a break of 100, you could just set an alert there. That is another um, strong indicator that the economy that you're going to see a pullback. This is a much um, further out leading indicator. So if you were to see this different than the TNX, right? So let me just be clear. It, when you broke this trend line, you saw the market sell off within that day. Okay, so it has a very um, compressed timeline. Whereas 
with oil, it will take it could take a week before once these prices hit for um, you know the market to start to react. Although that might be an exaggeration, but it could take up to a week. But a, you know, two days, three days, it's not going to do the same thing that the um, bonds will do. And so um, that's pretty much the update right now. Um, I'm just watching those indicators because there's no telling which way that's going to go. Um, the other thing to pay attention to is you had your jobs report today. And in the past, throughout this year, <clears throat> on bad jobs data, so there was like 100,000 less jobs created or something like that. As everybody knows, you know, these companies are going to slow down and um, lay people off. But um, normally, when you get bad jobs data, it's kind of opposite of what you might think. The market will rally off of bad jobs data because t in their delusional way, in their greedy way, what they, th what they see is a Fed pivot. That's all they're waiting for, right? So that jobs number um, should have created a move to the upside traditionally, but it did not. So that's something else to pay attention to is normally you would have seen a little upside on bad jobs data, but you did not see that. All right, you guys, hope it helps.